in progress. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our meeting of August 23rd, 2022. The time is 1 p.m. Uh, welcome to council and welcome to staff. Uh, welcome to those guests that are in the audience. And welcome to those who may be tuned into our YouTube feed. For the record, Councillor Barry Walsh is unable to attend today, and we will begin the meeting with reading our land acknowledgement. <clears throat> Excuse me, I always get choked up with this one. We respectively acknowledge that the Township of Aspidal Norwood is located on the Treaty 20 Mississauga Territory and in the traditional territory of the Mississauga and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nations, which include Curve Lake, Hiawatha, Alderbeck, Scugog Island, Rama, Beausoleil, and Georgina Island's First Nations. We respectively acknowledge that the Williams Treaty's First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. So at this time, I'll ask for a moment of silent reflection. Thank you. Call the meeting to order and the declaration of any pecuniary interest from council at this time or at time of substance. Seeing none, so I need approval of the agenda for today's meeting with an addition of R6 uh, on staff reports. Please, motion by Councillor Gore, seconded by Councillor Archer. All in favor? That's carried, thank you. Approval of the minutes then for the minutes of July 26 and the minutes of July and the public meeting of July 26 uh, to be adopted as presented. Motion by Deputy Mayor Burt, seconded by Councillor War. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Is there any business arising from those minutes at this time? Deputy Mayor Burt. Uh, thank you. I just want to comment um, about the minutes, and it, this came from a from actually a a resident who called me saying that uh, the active links, and I don't know whether it's Melanie or Candace that put those in. Um, there's the, there was the mention of the official plan, the strap plan, the four quarter newsletter, the capital projects, and they're quite appreciative of those because then they don't have to go back and search for them. And as a council member, I find those very helpful. Maybe it was just very noticeable at the last meeting because there yeah, were a lot of been there links. for years, yeah. Um, and I think there are always some, but I just wanted to mention that maybe for anybody who's watching, those are really helpful because then you don't have to go back searching. So I think, thank you, Melanie, because you put those on there and, and they are helpful even as you go back in the minutes. So I, but I wanted to mention it because I did have a resident um, mention that to me. So somebody else is also reading the minutes. So that's good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right, seeing no hands on to the consent agenda then. So correspondence for information, we have C1, C2, and, uh, and the Asphodel Norwood Police Services Board uh, meeting minutes. And the recommendations that we approve the consent agenda as circular. Councillor Archer, seconded by Deputy Mayor Burt. Any questions? All in favor? That's carried, thank you. Okay, on to delegations. Albert, okay. see you. You'd like to come forward, sir. Thank you. And this is regarding the Asphodel fifth line boat launch. Yes. Um, do you mind if I just stand? Nope, help yourself, sir. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Um, Cena and I don't really wanna be here. Uh, we know you're busy enough and you have all these things you have to deal with. So you don't need our problems. But we do have an unwanted problem and it's a little bit disturbing. Um, as you know, we own waterfront property and we live right beside a boat launch. It's on the fifth line. Um, I think you're quite aware of where it is. Um, and we sit there and it's just escalated. Of course, we had the pandemic and it, it got out of hand. And then Candace and her team um, dealt with it quite sufficiently. Um, and we thank you for that. There were signs put up. Uh, there was parking all over the place um, and it just got to the point where they were parking in our spots 
like opening our gates actually and uh and then they were nice enough to put it back but um you know just to get their boat around and and stuff like that so that's sort of disappeared because of the signs uh but the problem being and seed and i were unaware of it is we have fishing and swimming there and that's become the problem we don't really have a problem with the boat launch we know what the intent is i think we know what the tent is and and it's not our property um we choose to live there and we knew that it was a water access uh but you know it it's become now where we sit there on our deck and it's kind of got out of hand so what i did is uh between seed and i we wrote down we just kind of went back in our memory of the last four months because um we know what the pandemic was all about but this year has been you know they found it i think they they found the area and a lot of them are not from the area um we go down and we see some of the vehicles we know that they're out of town like they're toronto mississauga trenton they're all over the place but they found it now it's just like a little fishing hole and a swimming hole and it becomes a little issue with us because we have all these problems so uh nothing none of this is in order but i'll read them out to you so we have picnics with barbecues, lounging with chairs, sunbathing on cushions on the ground, uh, loud music, hanging out, drinking, garbage left behind, which we have picked up, uh, blows onto our property if we don't, and we take care of it. Um, we have women that are topless, um, showed up a few weekends and they're really you know we have our grandchildren around and it's 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 disturbing um and they're no hurry i don't know where they're from but they're no hurry to get dressed they just lounge out um and so we have people swimming not moving out of the way of boaters i mean if any one of these counselors have been down there um it's it's a bit havoc anyways but when you have a bunch of swimmers and they're out there swimming um and you have fishing people we even have tripods like they'll They'll set up the tripods and and then along comes somebody wants to launch a boat or whatever and then the arguments start and we hear it and it's they won't get out of the road they just they basically think that they have the right to be there so it's just not a real good usage together um so yeah we have the fishermen refusing to move their boats um heated arguments dogs running loose of course they come down with the dogs and they Take them off the leash and they're they're swimming around and then they take off because we don't have one but our neighbors have two of them and they just head right towards them so now they're running across the property to retrieve their dogs dogs are fighting a bit and, and it all gets de-escalated but uh and and then we've had four wheelers golf carts side by sides and they just park at the launch and they go swimming or they just do whatever they want they just hang out because they're really not they're not there to launch their boat they're just there to just hang out and you know they just uh some of the stuff that goes on there you just you know it's uh um and then we have a group of sea dudes now they're uh they just they just all show up you can almost you see we're we're used to the colors now as soon as they show up we know the group that's coming and there's usually six or seven of them and they just uh so they launch them all up there on the side and then they party and they carry on and then a bunch of cars come down drop people off and then they actually disperse and take their cars up but the whole group hang out there for the day and that's their little waterfront uh group for the day and they just you know zooming out front and whatever they do you know you know what they do with sea dues and but they're just hanging out for no cause like if they're if they're launching their boat and they're launching their sea dew they're they're gone you know and it, it doesn't become a problem for us um so we're we're asking council uh to reconsider fishing and swimming we don't we don't have an issue and it's really not our property so um we we understand the intent um even the township uses it for their watering trucks and i mean frank has had a chat with us for the greater and he can't get people on the road um you know it just it, it just doesn't the usage of fishing and swimming you know it just doesn't go with with a boat launch like it just you know it's rough stones and 
And so they're, they're just hanging out for no reason because it's really not a beach area, you know? Um, like I know at our park, we have a beach area and it's, we don't allow boats within 200 feet of it. It's a dangerous thing, you know, it's for us it is. Um, and then we don't allow fishing because we don't want any lures and stuff like that in, in the beach area. So I'm just not sure the usage of that is, is right. And we're asking that reconsider to eliminate fishing and swimming. I think some signs that would be put right down, right there, could be maybe enforced. Okay. Thank you, and I'm sorry. I didn't say Mr. Mayor and that's fellow fine. councilors. I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I got right to my job, I guess. No, that's good. And you handled yourself very well, Albert. Thank you very much. But thank you. And uh, like we talked about earlier there before the meeting started, that uh, we'll be discussing this uh, in uh, general business. Then, so. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So I need a, a motion then to receive the delegation from uh, up. Deputy Mayor Burt, uh, Councillor Moore, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you, sir. Don't mind, we'll see you. Okay. Yep. Very Thank good. You. Thank you. Okay. On to staff and committee reports then. So at this time, R1. Uh, Candace White, our CEO, Clerk Treasurer. This is regarding our Westwood speeding concerns. Please. Thank you, Mayor. So, as Council is well aware, over the course of the last couple of months, um, residents in the hamlet of Westwood have raised their concerns in regards to the number of speeders um, that are going through uh, Center Line Road. Um, it escalated around uh, the long weekend, as you're aware, where we had residents placing objects on the center line uh, to try to divert traffic. Um, what that then prompted was staff to go down to remove those objects from the center line. As council is aware, you're not allowed to place anything within a municipal road allowance. Um, and obviously you can't place lawn chairs and uh, five gallon pails, et cetera, on the center line to try to enforce traffic laws. So we needed to remove those items. While we were there, there was also an abundance of signage within the road allowance. So that also wasn't removed. Obviously, um, this brought our attention to the fact that the residents have a, a significant concern in regard to the speed down there or those activities would not be taking place. So immediately township staff contacted the Peterborough County OPP and we had the black cat deployed, which is the conspicuously located black box that goes up on a hydro or telephone pole that tracks number of vehicles and speeds. Um, that was done for a seven day period. The report is attached to the staff report to tell council the results of that. We did discuss that at our last council meeting as well as at the police services board meeting. Peterborough County OPP, as you can see, um, in regards to their enforcement rules, it falls outside of enforcement, but they we did make a request to have um, cruiser patrol hours increased in the hamlet, which has, has been done. So that is great. We did speak to a number of residents who reached out to councillors directly, as well as township staff directly. And we have summarized those concerns in the staff report. As you can see, excessive speeds, they wish to see some sort of traffic calming solution um, presented and implemented in the Hamlet. Um, they wish to keep their lawn signs in the municipal road allowance, would like to see the installation of children playing signs. Three of the residents supported the installation of solar speed radar signs. Two residents requested speed bumps and pretty much across the board was an increased uh, request for police presence. So staff has taken a look at the Black Cat report, one that compared the December 2021, because we did deploy the Black Cat back then as soon as Centerline Road was reopened and the, the bridge uh, was completed. Obviously, a couple of things have happened. Um, I don't know if council you've added up. Um, the number of cars, but I think that is probably one of the more concerns is there's been an increase in the amount of traffic there when you look at our road counts uh, for a couple of reasons, the bridge being out on the construction on Highway 7, that bridge being out diverted uh, through Westwood. Um, so that has, I guess that little hamlet to a certain degree has been found and there has been an increase in the number of vehicles. As you can see in the report, the majority of the vehicles are traveling within the enforceable limit. Um, that said, that is what's obviously the concern's been highlighted. 
OPP have said, based on the current posted speed limit, you don't have a significant issue, but obviously the residents um, think otherwise. And as you can see, there is some outliers there, as there always is every time we deploy the black cat, we see an outlier or two. Um, so you see, I think the maximum speed was 130 kilometers an hour, which um, is pretty significant, but that said it could be an emergency vehicle as well. So staff has taken a look, speaking with residents, um, based on conversation at our last council meeting, we want to ensure that those residents' concerns are being heard. And so we decided to put forward a recommendation to council for the following, to install a solar, solar radar speed sign. So as of right now, council has approved three to be installed in the village, two in Norwood Park and one by Maple View Retirement Home coming in on County Road 45. Um, we're recommending that one be removed at a Norwood Park and be placed at Westwood, as it seems that seems to be a uh, larger area of concern at this time, and one in the new subdivision at this time should be warranted. As you know, it is split up there. Some residents want the speed sign, some residents don't, so maybe it'll be a softer approach to just put one up there instead of two. Um, direct staff to install two children playing signs on center line row within Westwood, one at each end. Pretty, um, pretty simple fix. And that council direct staff to prepare a bylaw reducing the speed of center line road between Aspidale third line and county road 38 to 30 kilometers per, per hour for council's consideration at a future meeting. Uh, that is what the residents have asked for. Township staff were unsure as the appetite of council in order to, to do that because that would reduce the OPP's enforcement rating. So if we were to reduce the speed in there, that would reduce their tolerance. Um, so then obviously there would be a larger number of, of vehicles traveling based on the last black cut um, report that would be speeding. Um, but we didn't prepare the bylaw. Um, we wanted to hear what council had to say and provide any direction to us. And I think that basically summarizes it, Mayor. I'll take any questions from council. Thank you. Tough, tough, tough call, but go ahead, Councilor. Uh, thank you to you, Mayor. Uh, I want to thank staff for getting this turnaround so quickly because. Um, you know, being close to Westwood, I had quite a few reach out to me personally, and it is, it has been a concern, uh, as you address with Highway 7, with the bridge being out, people were rewriting through Westwood, as well as spring farming activities also increased that roadway, and it is a, a problem because there's no sidewalks. Um, so, you know, all of those things combined, and yes, I did look at the uh, amount of traffic, it was 2,500 2, a week, cars. Yeah a week going through Westwood, mm -hmm. it's pretty substantial. So I think that the two things that you have recommended, like the, uh, the installation of the signage and the solar radar, it's a good place to start. And if we find that there's more things to be addressed, perhaps look at that later. But I just wanted to thank staff because it, it was something, and when all those signs went up, it was something that we really needed to look at. You're welcome, you're welcome. Anyone else have anything further to say? Yeah. Mayor Burke. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, <coughs> really, just I guess repeating what Paula said, and when it comes to the um, 30 kilometers an hour, that's what I was wondering. If we do the, the children playing signs and the, um, the the radar or the solar sign first, and then take a look and see, and if it's still an issue, I have no problem of coming back and taking a look at the 30 kilometers an hour. And, and I think a lot of it, and, and Councillor Ward addressed it, people are on the street. They're not, there are no sidewalks, and I don't think there needs to be in Westwood. And um, so perhaps it is, it will come to about 30 kilometers an hour. But I think if we do it in a two step approach, do the signage first, have it available to uh, take a look and see where we go from there, whether it be in the fall or it's hard to say, it's hard to say how much traffic we're going to have to there after Thanksgiving weekend, um, it, it may decrease a little bit and, and things slow down. Um, that was just a, a thought I had that it could be done in a, in a two-step approach. Yes, Roger. Um, could we uh, possibly put, you know, slow down on the pavement? I think that seems to work in a lot of towns where, you know, where you're, where you're driving along, you stop and you know, slow down with some such big letters there. Like right, there's no sidewalks and like people's really somehow we gotta get it through the head, slow down. I mean, yeah, what do you think? Yep, uh through you mayor. So township staff did um that did come across our desk. We agree. Um that said, 
we are recommending that it be added to, and it'll be included in the 2023 budget for line painting in the spring. Oh, okay. um, the line painting program for 2022 is already established and it's already ordered. They're already running three months behind. And to be honest with you, we won't be long before we're going to be plowing and scraping it off the road. So if we add it in the spring, then you'll get the full season out of it uh, next year. But it is recommend it is slated to be recommended in the 2023 budget under the line painting item. So you will see a slight increase in cost there, which we've seen anyway with the inflation, to be honest. But and just a further comment to there's there's no streets in Ashdown Norwood that aren't speeding on either. So I mean, like whether it be Ridge Street, Spring Street, County Road 40. Uh, County Road 45 coming into town. I mean, there's everybody has gotten an email from somebody saying that, that somebody's breaking the law or so they think they are. Uh, like, that's why we deploy the black cats out there. And it does come to the police services board. And when then we do send the cruisers out to the hot spots that we get the complaints. So when, when the residents say to you as a counselor, Oh, you don't care about our little town or our hamlet or whatever like that. It's it's not the case. We do. We take everything that anyone brings to us, and staff look after this to to the best of their ability with what council can supply for them as far as budget is concerned. So we're doing what we can. So uh, we have a, a recommendation then ahead of us here or in front of us. Uh, what's uh, council's wish on that? I can tweak it. Yeah, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Give us some tweak it. Yeah, tweak it. Oh, sure. Step. And I'll see what the other, yeah. what the rest of council thinks of that. Sure. Um. That the council of the township of Aspidale Norwood accepts this report regarding Westwood speeding concerns for information and further that the council of the township of Aspidale Norwood direct staff to install a solar radar speed sign and center line road in Westwood in consultation with Peterborough County OPP. And further that the council of the township of Aspinall Nora direct staff to install two children playing signs and center line road within Westwood, one at each end. And further that the council of the township of Aspinall Norwood direct staff to redeploy the black cat within 30 days after these two remediative efforts being implemented. Motion by Councillor Archer, seconded by Mayor Burt. Is there any other questions to the motion? None, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Candace. R2 then, uh, Candace White again, our CAO clerk treasurer, and this is regarding our compliance audit committee. Uh, yes, so a little bit of a housekeeping item here. Under the Municipal Election, Elections Act, Council is re required to appoint a compliance audit, audit committee by October 1st of an election year. Um, a couple of these names have been on uh, the compliance audit committee in Peterborough County for a, a significant number of years. Um, so Peter, all municipalities in Peterborough County are um, putting forward to their councils the same compliance audit committee. So it's the same members are not easy <laughs> to find. There's an, a vast number of people willing to sit on this committee. Um, but we are recommending Stephen Brickle, Cheryl Healy, Nancy Wright Laking, and David Clifford. So the only new addition to that group is David Clifford, which whom we all know is a retired CAO of Dural Dumber. Um, so the other three individuals have sat on the compliance audit committee, um, as I've stated, for at least three election periods. And as of right now, they've had very minimal to no activity, um, just based on the fact that um, candidates um, in the elections are uh, following the Elections Act when it comes to their finances and their compliance with the Form 4, et cetera. And there hasn't been any need uh, to do a financial audit on any candidate um, in recent years um, in Aspidal, Norwood. But the committee has to be in, in place in case that requirement comes forward. So uh, again, housekeeping items putting forward to council to be compliant with the Municipal Elections Act. So we need a motion then to accept this report regarding the appointment of the Compliance Audit Committee for 2022 with the appropriate names that have been read out uh, for the Municipal Election of 2022. Motion by Councillor War, seconded by Councillor Archer. Any other questions to the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Hey, R3. Uh, this is one near and dear to our heart. Uh, and us again, this is regarding our aquifer capacity and vulnerability report, please. Mm, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to ask Ian Ames from DM Wills and Kyle Beecock, our Water Wastewater Operations Manager, to just, if you wouldn't mind just coming up and sitting at the delegation table, that would be wonderful. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. 
So we've been, it's been a long time coming, um, but finally um, we're able to present to you a, in your council agenda package is a summarized version of the rather large reports that, which is the Norwood's aquifer capacity study, as well as the Norwood's aquifer vulnerability study. So these, both of these studies were necessary, but for different reasons. So in 2018, as council is aware, we since then we've been participating in an Ontario land tribunal hearing um, in regards to a proposed development um, on the extent, what would be the extension of, of Wellington Street up and behind the uh, wellhead um, area of the village. Obviously that is in very close physical proximity to the wells that are the source for the village of Norwood's drinking water. So in order to sign off on the draft plan conditions for this development, the township had requested significant hydrogeological work that needed to be required to ensure that our bylaw, the transport pathway bylaw was being adhered to and there would be no impact to the source. The developer uh, refused to enter into a preliminary development agreement, refused to post the securities and refused to move forward with the hydrogeological scope of work. Um, and appealed every draft plan condition that Peterborough County had that was already pre-approved in 1987 by the province. So basically we all inherited this file. Uh, none of us had any pre-approvals on the file. It was fully inherited from the province in the 80s. So they basically took a um, appeal forward, appealing all the conditions. So once you appeal all the conditions, one of those conditions obviously was for servicing, which included any hydrogeological work to protect the source of the drinking water. So, and they refused to do it, but in order to defend ourselves at the hearing and in order for Peterborough County to have the tools that they needed um, to ensure that they were successful with the claim, we, the township took on um, a certain portion of the scope of work of the hydrogeological work themselves to basically prove to the Ontario Land Tribunal uh, the vulnerability of that source and the potential impact of, of that development and what it would mean to our wellhead protection area if that development was to move forward as proposed. So the summarized version of the report is in your package and basically it states a couple of high level things and then I'll pass the floor over to Kyle and Ian but basically is stating that our source is highly vulnerable um, specifically because we don't do not have a naturally natural occurring clay or um, non-permeable layer that would protect the source every all of the granulars above it are very permeable which means things can flow down through it quite easily which makes any development on those lands adjacent to our wells to obviously be identified as a potential risk to the wells. So this report uh, proves our position at the Ontario Land Tribunal, which council is aware in May that uh, sided in favor of the county and the township that the scope of work needs to be completed. The next step of course would be to have some monitoring wells drilled on the development property itself. Cause as you know, the developer refused access to the land. So we had to drill monitoring wells all the way around it. Um, which wasn't a bad thing. I think the, the data that we got from those wells was needed anyway, but a few more on the development lands themselves. Um, so again, we're waiting for that development agreement to be signed and those securities to be posted as approved by council. And we are waiting to hear back from the developer on that. Um, but I will pass the floor over to Ian and Kyle, if you have anything to add in regards to the vulnerability report. Yes, I think our uh, investigation and following analysis is very successful in that regard. We were able to um, you know, looking at the complex geology, but not actually being able to investigate on the land in consideration. We were able to drill, as Candace mentioned, on the adjoining township properties and uh, confirmed our suspicions that, as you mentioned, there's no real fine grain material uh, beneath the actual proposed development lands uh, that would afford the aquifer any protection. And we, we had an inkling about, about that based off of our knowledge of the geology and those, those geological formations and depth, uh, deposits. But until actually doing that work, we weren't able to confirm that. However, we still are interpolating or kind of looking in between those two data points to say this is what is exactly beneath the land without actually having been on them. Um, so again, I think the, the additional uh, investigation is warranted to confirm what's below that property, confirm what the groundwater table is, exactly what that material is like that will be constructed on potentially. Um, but I think overall, uh, the work that we did really supports the idea that we're dealing with a vulnerable aquifer and um, you know, any development should be prohibited in that area, as well as uh, there should probably further investigation to the 
the, the effects that the Dalton would have on the water balance, which was something that wasn't exactly, I can't speak to that, I'm not an engineer, I'm a geoscientist, so I can't look at really the, the engineering component of that, but um, the studies that were conducted uh, looking at the stormwater management practices uh, were a bit quiet in some regards to speaking to, you know, if you did pay that whole area or did create rooftops everywhere, how is that going to affect the, uh, the infiltration capacity on those lands and the ability for the aquifer to be recharged in the future as well? So we're not only looking at uh, did not did not only look at the the vulnerability from the contaminant side, but also the risks going forward with um, you know not being able to recharge the aquifer and provide adequate water supply in the future for their proposed development phase there um, up until the next uh, twenty years or so. Thank you. Anything, Kyle? Anything further? No, nothing that's, uh, Ian and Janice haven't recovered. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, questions from council? Deputy Mayor Burke. Uh, thank you to you, Mayor. Um, thanks for this report. I went through it several times, it, uh, but I, I appreciate the executive summaries and the conclusions and recommendations <laughs> because uh, there's a lot of data in there and, and I am not a hydro hydrological um, engineer by any stretch. So. Um, I guess, and perhaps this question is more for, for Candace. Um, I'm on the Source Water Protection Committee, and we had those mapping changes done just a few years ago. And now we're finding uh, some changes to that mapping. And what's the process for that? Can we hang on to those changes without having to go through them to change the mapping? And uh, so, so I guess that's my, my first part of that question. Sure, sure. Uh, three, Mayor. So I, we are hopeful that we will not have to update the mapping because the changes are fairly insignificant from our current mapping. Um, obviously, this would be the third change to the WIPA mapping in about five years if we were to change it again and a fairly significant scope of work is required. But what we're seeing is this field work actually proved that the the area, we've pretty well defined it. Like, so what is on the mapping now, we're comfortable with without going through the scope of work to have them change at this time. That said, as we continue to move forward and have the second step of the aquifer capacity study done and drill more monitoring wells on the development lands themselves and something else comes to light and maybe there needs to be a significant change to the mapping, if that was to take place, then obviously that mapping is very important. Um, so we would take a look at that time as to maybe applying and going through the onerous process of updating that mapping, because unfortunately that process has not been streamlined and not much red tape has been cut from it. Um, it's been, it's much the opposite actually. So um, as of right now, we're not proposing to change it just due to very small changes required. Okay, thank you very much. I think what would trigger it if we drill another well, mm -hmm. or if we apply for an increase to Water. Yeah, right. from take water, then we would likely see them request that again. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, go ahead. I have lots of questions, but I'm going to start and maybe go back and forth because I think maybe Lori may, Deputy Mayor Burke may have a follow up too. Um, so when the WIPA mapping was done, because I sit on Orca, so a lot of the same things comes across our desk. Um, so they identified 18 to 20 um, risk. Um, uh, properties of risk in the north end of uh, Norwood, that wellhead area. Um, so we were one of the first municipalities to go through that process after the, uh, the legislation. Mm -hmm. It seems it seems crazy to have to go through. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I no, I've heard it again. before. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, like, I think the identity of the risk, you know, has been uh, verified. Yeah. Um, my other, that was common, I guess, more than a question. Do you think more um, chipping away from the esker, uh, you know, because it was 22 kilometers in length and now it's, you know, substantially less. Do you think that's impacting any of the water supply in uh, the, for the village of Norman? And you're thinking, uh, like how far north across, like mm -hmm. 10 kilometers sort of yeah. thing? <sighs> Hasn't it shortened east west? Not it's, north it, it's, uh, it's more of the east west. East west. It, it kind yeah. of goes down in the snake formation. It yeah. meanders. Yeah. I, I don't think that would, yeah. you know, I'm going to kind of shoot from the hip here without yeah. having really looked at the areas or you know, really, you know, detailed analysis of it. But provided that um, those areas were perhaps you're extracting aggregate form, from, et cetera, as long as you, if you can imagine looking in plan view, kind of from a thousand feet up. 
you're not actually changing the surface area that could um, you know, capture water and, and, and retain that water and bring that eventually down into the aquifer to the municipal well eventually. Um, so I don't think that would be you know, affecting the, the volume of water that's available to recharge the aquifer. Um, if you did develop on top of that land or somehow blocked water from entering at that location where the uh, sediments are rather coarse and they allow for rapid infiltration of surface water, then you could get into a situation like that. But um, we have to look at that a little more detail if, uh, if you like. I, if I may have a follow-up follow on that. And I was just wondering, uh, so we have uh, the travel waves that go below the surface, but what about identified risks such as um, like the proposed high, um, what we call it, um, the railway, it's supposed to be uh, reactivated. They want a high speed rail and, and the cemetery. Will they, uh, those things factor into any of the water? Not within the wellhead protection area analysis that we've conducted, uh, okay. but this would definitely be a consideration to look at in the future, um, especially if they are bringing on that railway you know, back online. Um, depending on obviously what they're transporting and what risks be associated with that would have to be addressed individually. Want to go back and forth? Yeah. Does Mayor Burke, yeah. you something else? Um, well, no, just thinking of what um, Councillor Moore said with the, with the high speed rail line, if it does come through, obviously there's would be quite a large amount of construction that would need to be done, and that would trigger would, would that not trigger more permits and around that wellhead protection area or well, we potentially depending on depth of, depth of ex excavation, excavation is usually where those things get About, triggered yeah 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 okay so, okay it would yeah, depend no, I on that, it, I, think. I would be more concerned of a spill yeah then i would be of the construction activities okay. i think i think it like ian had said depend on what they're transporting and if there was ever a you know, assuming it's just passenger is if it's high know, speed rail, it's high speed rail, that's, you know, passenger, right yeah. then um, then that's fine. But really, the biggest thing, and we have it identified in our emergency response yes. plan, mm -hmm. uh, is that we have a rail line going through. And if there ever was a spill, how would that trigger? And our emergency response plan does actually uh, speak to it and how we would address it. But as far as construction activities, we obviously were a significant stakeholder. If they're going through the village, we would be at the table. And we would be keeping keeping council apprised of any potential mm -hmm. concerns. And obviously that you're dealing with a government agency. So you wouldn't get the pushback that we see on the private side for mitigation efforts right. in regards to ensure that the wellhead area is protected. And it is far enough north. I think mm -hmm. like it would be quite, they would never create a transport pathway. No, and the sort of trooper thought on that angle as well. A lot of the risks with these old rail lines is that they're constructed. I'm not sure how old that one is, but you got creosote in the timbers, yeah. you've got yeah. slag falling off from old mining operations <laughs> that are probably still sitting within that rail bed. Yeah. Um, you know, without having the benefit of knowing what that new construction would look like, there's probably gonna be, you know, environmental permitting. I'm not quite sure what, what type, but there'd be investigations likely as part of that, that scope of work to do that construction. And they might even identify at that point, you know, maybe we should take this material out and put clean stuff back right. in. So it might actually improve things overall from a construction perspective. Okay. Right. I know we've been talking about the vulnerability study. I was just going to mention that the aquifer study, obviously um, the pumping rates were good, the recharge rates were good. Um, I think we've determined that uh, 1,965 cubic meters um, is available. And um, just to refresh my memory, I believe we use approximately 650 a day. Yeah, 650, 680. A little in, higher in the summer. Um, yeah. So when, um, for example, phase four comes online, um, what do you anticipate that bumping up to per day? Uh, cool. We haven't seen a lot. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> we really haven't. Um, on the phone with me. I'd have to crunch some numbers. Oh, but that's okay. That's okay. We got, uh, what, three people per unit, 152 units, 450-ish <laughs> people at 300 and 75 liters a day. That's the ministry. That's a bit roughly what we were seeing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, I, I was just curious to see when, when we would see those numbers uh, jump up. Yeah. 2024. Like we, we have yeah. a lot of space in the capacity. And um, how long has that 1965 been in place for the township? 
Oh, Chris Village, decades. Well, yeah. decades. Yeah. Decades. It might even be original. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's since the third well was drilled yeah. in 94. Yeah. Okay. So okay. 94, I think, was, was when that number, the third well came. But now we have the numbers to prove yeah, that, it, back, that it's there. That it's there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, Candace, you want to go a little further on that? Yeah. So the ministry assigned us or issued us the permit to take water in the early 90s for the 1965 but there was no significant well work field work pumping test done to prove that that's actually what was in the ground so as we've been looking at these developments and obviously norwood is, is growing um, the provincial policy statement basically says we're, we're to grow. So we've been growing and that's been one of the concerns of every single person sitting at this table. So the aquifer capacity study, which is the second study that we're chatting about today, um, the main intent of that study was to prove that we have the 1965 in the ground, that we don't just have a piece of paper that's been sitting around for decades to say that's how much we're allowed to take. So obviously we've always been well in compliance with the ministry for volume. As you know, even with, we have phase one online, we have phase two online, we have probably 65 to 70% of phase three online, and we're still sitting around that 650 to 680. Um, so we're looking, that's 275 homes approximately. So we're looking at about another 150 for phase four. So, you know. So it, I would say around 170 cubes a day at the high end is okay. what you'll see on average okay. increase. So. So essentially, you've got a fair, you know, we've now proven that the village of Norwood does not have a drinking water supply issue, and that the residents and every member of this council and the current staff can rest easy knowing that the developments that they've already approved and that phase four that's in the approval process right now is not going to negatively impact the volume of drinking water in this village. And based on the number of conversations that I have had with either members of council or members of the, of the village, I think that is exceptionally important for every single person sitting at this table to get that message out there that no, just because another house is going in the ground, that every single person at this table has the responsibility to ensure that that drinking water is in fact in place, determine how vulnerable it is. And that's exactly what we've done. And that's exactly what these two studies have proven. So you haven't done, there's been nothing that's done that's been detrimental to the volume of water. And we held fast in that Ontario Land Tribunal hearing to ensure that no development is going to take place on that land directly to the north of those wells without the proper work being done and the proper approvals in place to ensure that that wellhead is protected. And that's what the vulnerability study did. And we're gonna continue down the same path. And it's been two and a half years to get here. Um, but I know from Kyle and I's perspective, and I'm sure with the members of council that have been sitting at this table, and I'm sad that Councillor Welsh isn't here today because he was a big player at the table as well, that this is a huge day for Aspinall Norwood. So shout it from the rooftops that the drinking water is fine and it's being protected. Well done, Council. And BMLs, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I have, to Go ahead. Yep. I have one more question. Please do. And uh, it has to do with uh, well 1B, and it has some efficiencies. Um, I was just wondering if there's any other uh, activities the township could use uh, that well for, or would we have to get other permission, like say for fire protection, if it ever needed to be done, or you know the watering of the roads that we use, uh, you know we, we stop at different places to get water. Is that a possibility, or is that going through another license, or is it too much hassle? I think we have the intention is to use it as a monitoring well. Yeah, that's is, the kind of the long term intention. Is, is the long term use, intention yeah. of it because it's in perfect location. <laughs> yeah, 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 to have it to monitor what the other wells are doing. I mean, down the road. I, if we feel that we need it for another source. I mean, we have dry wells installed and dry hydrants installed around the village. Um, we would, and hydrants, we hope that they will continue to go there. But if there's ever a need, we have that well there. But right now, um, its main purpose would be monitoring. And that's probably mm -hmm. you see anything in the future that you'd want to see different there. Yeah, no, not really. There's no actual pump still down in the well then after the fact either. Anyway. So no, the, no, 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 yeah, it's gone. The pump's gone. Yeah. yeah so actually, dipping well, the pump was well, actually never put in there. No, yeah. it was supposed to be a replacement well. That's right. It yeah. just didn't produce. Yeah. Any other questions, Council? Thank you.
I think uh, our hats off to staff for for <laughs> two and a half years of uh, trials and tribulations and questions, many questions. Good job, well done, thank you. And DM Wells staff, uh, your consultants and all the studies that were done there was well needed for the township. Uh, we just need, like like uh, Candace said, to get the word out. Uh, yep, thank you. All right, uh, so if there's no more questions from council, so then uh, the recommendations that we accept this report uh, for the Norwood Aquifer Capacity and Vulnerability Reports for information at this point. Mayor Burt, Councillor War seconded. Any other questions on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Council. R4 then is our financial variance 2022 second quarter, Candace, please. Thank you, Mayor. So put my treasurer hat on. So it's that time of year where we see the uh, second quarter variance. It basically just details the general ledger of each um, operating and capital account for the first six months of operations. And as you can see, um, the township is in a positive surplus financial position. A lot of the capital work, obviously, up till June 30th, um, we're in the early part of the construction season. So it's pretty early at the second quarter to say where we're going to land for capital. Um, but all in all, there's no huge red flags in really any of the departments. As you can see, we've talked a lot about the Ontario Land Tribunal. You can see the legal fees in order to fight that um, was probably more significant than any of us were hoping. But after four years and in order to protect those wells, uh, we all decided that it was well, um, well worth it. Outside of that, I mean, each department as council is aware um, is its own. So whether it's administration, facilities, um, transportation, et cetera. So each manager is responsible for its own, own budget. And as you can see, we're kind of running um, plus or minus a little bit of that 50% where we should be outside of the capital work, which obviously the majority of the invoices come in in the fourth quarter when the construction season is winding down. Um, but I'll really take any specific questions from council at this time. You've had an opportunity to review the general ledger lines and how each department is is moving forward, water and wastewater is also sitting in a surplus position. Um, and the library um, is sitting at a slight deficit, but that is because of the IT consultant um, concerns. But as you can see, the ad is out. So um, we'll be able to put that to bed shortly. So any questions, Mayor, I'll take. Questions, Deputy Mayor Burke. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. I just have one specific question. Um, yeah, everything looks to be in good shape. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. Um, for the elections line, do, could you remind me, do you, or do we put money in annually in an election budget line or just- I mean, a reserve. Year? Okay, that's what I thought, but yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, I could have looked back and found that. No, that's okay, no, nope. uh, nope, that's fine. Every I year- I recall that. That's what I thought, that something goes in every year. You basically split the cost over three years, okay. put it into reserve each year, and then we pull it out in the fourth year with the election. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Never used to happen that way. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, Councilor Wolf. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I have a two part question. Sure. One, because we're talking about this uh, variance uh, uh, second quarter. I was just wondering about our budget schedule plan going forward for 2023 and how that's going to impact because of the upcoming municipal election. And I do have a specific question about the environmental services. It's only sitting at 7%, but you also have the consulting plan for the future closing of the land um, transfer station. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, um, is, is there a date that, that might be uh, forthcoming about the closing, the, the official closing of that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. So, your mayor, so to answer the first part of your question, so the plan of municipal staff, unless directed differently from council, is to move forward um, with our traditional municipal budgeting schedule. So, you'll start to see draft reports in the month of September. You'll see draft again in October. You'll see draft again in November. Um, and then, um, obviously, for hopes for final adoption in December, um, we've been on kind of that not the first meeting in January. That's kind of where we've been at for a number of years now um, in order to ensure that the municipality and the corporation as a whole has a 
full 12 months to conduct um, operations and, and get capital projects tendered out early in the year. It's in the best interest to get things moved forward. As you know, we'll continue with um, it as a by department basis. So you'll see drafts per department. As you normally normally have seen, we're going to continue to move forward um, regardless of the municipal election. Um, we are not entering into a lame duck uh, scenario as four of our five councillors have registered to return. So we are not in lame duck, at least up until the election itself. And so we will continue to move forward um, and run the operations as it needs to run. And then um, based on the election, if we need to make any alterations or changes to that schedule, then we will do so at that time. But as of right now, it's uh, business as usual for our township staff. Um, second part of that question. Mm -hmm. um, so the landfill closure plan is what I believe you're referring to. So it is probably the closure plan itself is looking to be completed in 2023. And then it takes a number of years to actually close it. Um, so the plan itself will detail what's going to happen in 2024, what's going to happen in 2025, et cetera. And then, of course, we have to monitor, monitor it for at least 25 years, if not longer. And that's where the majority of the monitoring, co the cost of the closure plan comes in. It's not, obviously, there's costs in capping it and obviously engineering and consulting fees. Um, but the landfill is at, got 1% left. So 1% in the landfill. So it's basically, you could say closed. We're fully operating as a transfer station and have been for a couple of years. Um, so now we just have to do the consulting and engineering. And so that plan um, will be in the 2023 budget for closure in 2024 and apply for the closure to the ministry in 24. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from council? Just a comment about the uh, budgeting is uh, how, how important it is to get the budget up and running and have those reports in front of us so then when it does come to budget time, we are able to get out and tender our jobs and get them get, get it back faster. And now that we notice other townships are trying to copy us and even the county's trying to copy us to get their budget done quicker too because they're losing out in the long run as far as getting uh, the work done. Okay, uh, so our four then is what we were discussing and the recommendation then is that we accept this report uh, for the 2022 second quarter financial variance for information. Motion by Councillor Moore, seconded by Councillor Archer. Any other discussion on the motion? All in favor? That's carried, thank you. Okay, Candace, here's something else that not a lot of other councils do and that's the management action list. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. So one thing I am going to add um, to that would be an update to the Westwood speeding um, based on the motion of council for the black cat going back up. I think we should circle back around and make sure that you guys get that uh, second black cat report, but that'll be in October. Um, so we'll add that. And then you'll see um, all of the budget, um, the departments will be added to the action list and you'll see the first round in September. Thank you. What else do we have? Uh, there's really nothing else on here. The council isn't aware of that you've seen on there for a little bit of time. The um, Baker Tilly is in next week or the uh, audit, so that is why you see the consolidated financial statements for 2021, probably the last meeting of September, and hopefully they're here to present. If not, it'll be the first meeting of October. Um, anything else? Go ahead. Uh, I just had a question. The Rogers Tower on the Birdsall line near the mm -hmm. road is coming back around. It is, they moved is... it. Oh, okay. They okay. moved it um, basically on the same property, just further down, so they're outside of that particular um, resident who had concerns. So okay. they're kind of that's a few years ago. 2020, I'd say. Okay. Yeah, okay. 2020. I see it back on the list. So yep, yeah. they've are uh, coming back at it, which it's see it's all part of the broad, like all oh, of yeah. the cell tower exactly. and broadband with project, right? Yeah. So they need to find a home for it. So okay. and they do have a stand that says oh I know, I know. <laughs> if they really yeah. want it, they can do it, right? Yeah. They just don't seem to use it. No. And, oh, Councillor Moore. Uh, yeah, thank you for being there. I, I see also that the Westwood Cemetery updates coming forward. Um, is it just more of a ring 
like it is an update or is there going to be something? No, no it, it'll be substantial. Okay. Um, so uh, township staff have had a couple of meetings with the BAO. Looks like uh, you signed a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> and the cemetery board signs a piece of paper and you can call it done. So obviously the larger piece is, is the survey survey work. So there has to be some correspondence that goes back to that church board to kind of know where the response, they, they have to apply for the consent. It's their property. So they need to apply to the consent. Um, so we'll be working with them on that. So the report that comes back will detail all of that. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions? Council? Too. All right, so then we made a recommendation uh, that uh, we accept this report as suggested. Motion by Councillor Archer, second by it's hard to agree. Deputy Mayor Burt. Any other questions on the motion? In favor? And that's carried. Thank you. So the uh, amended agenda was uh, brought in R6, and this had to do with the results for the surface treatment. It would have been Peter. To Shane, but he's not here today. So, Candace, I assume you're doing this. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, Peter had a meeting with MTO that he's attending. So, yeah. I said I would deliver his report. So, as council knows, we retendered uh, with a different approach to the resurfacing of the third line. The tender went out for the resurfacing uh, from Highway 7 to the center line. We included two provisional items, as council has seen in the past. Sometimes staff will do that just to see what they come in at and whether we're able to incorporate them or absorb the, the extra scope of work. And that was the fourth line um, and center line between Cameron line and <laughs> County Road 38. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Township staff is not recommending to move forward with the provisional item, just uh, the resurfacing of the third line which will be complete and all ready to go. Culvert replacement, um, road base, et cetera. <coughs> Very good. I'm sure you don't want to read the land acknowledgement when you do that. No. <laughs> so staff is uh, um, recommending that we award it to Miller Paving in the amount of 183800 excluding HSD. As you can see, the municipal budget includes 236,000, so we are within municipal budget. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Any questions? Councilor uh, Archer. I have one question about the provisional items saying we're going to take, not, take, uh, not put them in this tender, but um, would we be able to carry them over till next year or they give us, <coughs> the public paper give us any opportunity to do that or where we stand on that? <coughs> <laughs> All right, excuse me. Two and a half months in the cough that keeps on giving. Yeah. I apologize, Council. Um, no there has been conversation between Township staff and Miller Paving in regards to the potential of carrying the price forward and including the scope of work in the 2023 surface treatment program. We're waiting to hear back from them in writing. Um, but the intent is that obviously we would want to close those gaps next year. <laughs> um, the reason they're not being included, obviously, is not financially driven. Um, in the staff report, it does um, detail there is some significant culvert work that needs to happen on the fourth line, which involves some um, significant consultation with the adjacent property owners. And to ensure that that's done appropriately and um, successfully, um, we're just going to take the bit of time that it needs because the scope of work has to be done by the 23rd of September. <clears throat> So it'll just be the third line. <coughs> uh, yeah, thank you for you, Mayor. And uh, she just gave the answer to my question. I was going to ask about the completion date of the project. And she's already said it's the 23rd of September. And yeah. what you just said. So I won't have you repeat it and try to talk through that. One. Thank so, you. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions at this time? No. Pretty straightforward report. Okay, so then uh, the recommendations that we received the report regarding the results for the tender and that we execute this agreement with myself, the mayor, and the clerk with Miller Paving Limit uh, for the amount of 183,800 uh, excluding HST. Councillor Archer's made the motion, seconded by Councillor Lohr. Uh, any other discussion on the motion? Seeing no hands, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. And thank you, Candace. So correspondence for action. Uh, so we have C3, Town of Aurora, 
regarding the private members bill C-233, Kira's Law. Uh, what's Councilor's thoughts on this? Uh, that we uh, through, through you there, um, this is the support from the Motion to support, seconded by Councillor Lohr. Uh, is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. Uh, C4, Bailey Baptist School of Dance, and this is a request for relief of facility rental fees. Council, what's your thoughts? Councillor Lohr. Thank you uh, for you. I have uh, one quick question. Uh, well, I I think it's a business, and I think that in the past it's been uh, for things that are nonprofit. Like I think she does run a business, and I wish her the best. I think that this is a great opportunity for people to use the town hall. Um, but I'm not in support of this donation request just because it is a business. It's not uh, an organization or a group that needs some relief on the costs. And I'm just so I have a two part question. One. What would be the hourly rate that they charge at the town hall? Do you any idea? I guess we do. Sure. We have our fees and charges bylaw right charges. here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the second one, um, it's like how, 20 how much something per hour. Do we have left on our line? And I know I'm catching you off guard with this. Uh, the donation request line uh, that council has, how much do we have left on our donation line for this year? I actually know that answer. Okay. It's about 2,500 okay. um, for the 2022 budget year. And oh, I really need to bite the bullet and get glasses. So it needs to happen. Sorry about the hand is not for that. Oh no, that's fine. Um, it's I know it's like twenty something per hour, twenty seven per hour uh, plus HST for a maximum of five hours. So twenty seven dollars an hour. That's pretty cheap rental. That's my comments. Yeah. Sure. So uh, you want to make a motion? I would make the uh, the motion that we, we do not fulfill yeah. this request. That's fine. Is there a second to that? I have a second. Okay. Uh, Deputy Vert seconded. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Um, I'll, I'll just make a, a comment. I agree. It, it is a business, and um, at twenty-seven dollars an hour, that's pretty good. And, and there are other options. Um, you know, the library is eighteen, I believe, for less than two hours, or thirty beyond that. So, so there are some other options. Um, I think she'll do a great job. I think she'll get lots of people in, anyways, and, and it will probably just take one or two people per session to to cover her or to cover her costs uh, of the town hall. So, uh, yeah, we wish her all the best. And uh, but I'll second that. Okay. Any other comments or concerns? Seeing none. Um, motions on the table. All in favor. And then that's carried. Thank you. So uh, on, next on the agenda is the council liaison reports. Does anybody have anything you'd like to bring forward this time? Deputy Mayor Burke. I just want to remind everyone that the um, <laughs> showcase Aspen on Norwood will be held Saturday, September the tenth, from ten until two. Um, because the ice will be in, it, it looks a whole lot different this year. Um, we will have vendors in here, and it is full. Cool. There are our vendors outside. There's a touch and truck event, and uh, Bailey Batty will be coming with her her dancers, and um, Donegal Fiddlers will be here, and they'll be outside, and I think Paw Patrol and a few other things. So um, hopefully, if you can come out between ten and two on the tenth, uh, we'll happy to see you here. And there'll be lots of raffle prizes and door prizes too. Anyone else? Ladies on reports. No hands then. Uh, CAO clerk's treasures list, then, please. Um, so, a couple of things to advise council of the uh, solar speed signs. We're waiting for the banding machine from the county. So, <clears throat> the posts have been installed. So, the banding machine will band the sign. It's fairly significant weight. Um, so, instead of us, the county has the machine that does it. So, um, that should be forthcoming. They're going to come down and help us out and ban the, the units to the posts themselves. <laughs> um, Cedar Street update. Uh, so the closure continues. Um, I'm, we are waiting on a permit from MTO. I'm crystal balls broken, but I am of 
I am a believer that they are holding that permit until after Labor Day because they don't want any work in their highway before Labor Day weekend and summer traffic. That is, they haven't said that, but that is my, um, and if my crystal ball was working, that's what I would say would predict it. Unfortunately, Cedar Street is gonna have to remain closed until Highway 7 permit and opens up because that's just how the construction project needs to move forward. Um, we have been working, uh, the owner of the car wash has been able to get their, uh, their trusses in. That was a bigger concern. We thought we were going to have to fill Cedar Street in and dig it back up in order to get the trusses in, but they were able to get the trusses in and have been working with the Circle K owners and they have the other entrances to their businesses off Highway 7. So um, not saying that it's overly convenient to the community, but um, I suspect we're not going to see it till September. But once the contractor gets on Highway 7. They obviously want to be off that highway as fast as possible. So I suspect it's not going to take them long to connect Cedar to Wellington. <clears throat> um, skateboard Park uh, Earthworks is suspected to begin September 19th. Uh, the 3D, um, I guess, renderings um, of the new park is going to be released to the kids for their uh, final comments, hopefully within the next week or two. Um, the earthworks are going to start on the 19th because it's, it's not in infringement on the on the design itself. So if we need to make a few tweaks, that's fine. We just got to get the stormwater management uh, portion of it started because obviously it collects the bowl, concrete bowl collects stormwater, there's drains, it's got to go down and um, instead of paying the contractor to do it, uh, township staff are going to build the soak away rock pit in order to um, get rid of the stormwater to assist with the budget of, of that project. Um, community recognition awards um, are out. The applications are starting to come in and the meeting has been set for the committee to um, come together to discuss the applications, um, I believe September 9th. Um, so pass word out, we're still collecting applications. Um, the Pete's game, the tickets have been printed. So I have one here, um, the OHL preseason game um, that the uh, lead hand for the community center um, in parks was able to put in place. That's a three-year commitment. Um, so they'll be um, with us for the next three years. Um, minor hockey, we've passed it on to them. Um, and they are the lead um, of the event. There will be 50-50 draw. Obviously the tickets are available to purchase um, for Sunday, September 4th. So uh, pass, pass on the word. Um, again, just to advise council that we are not in a lame duck period. Um, we have 80% potential return rate uh, for the current council, which is above the Municipal Elections Act requirement of 75%. Um, as you can see, the fitness club is, uh, the expansion out here is moving forward. We are waiting, uh, I had an update meeting this morning with task force. We are waiting for um, the rebar, but everything seems to be moving forward there on on schedule and business and community awards. So all of the applications have been received. Uh, so the committee needs to meet in order to make uh, the decisions and we need to set a, a date in the calendar for the award ceremony. So um, council would like to take a, a look and maybe give me an idea of what you'd like to see there. What was the date last year? I think November. It was November. Yeah, but I can't tell you the exact. Have you gotten a good response? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we have nominations in every category. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Is it traditionally on the Friday evening or Thursday evening? What are like? We've only ever had um, traditionally weekend evenings are a little tough, especially with people with kids with sports and stuff. So, you know, I would suspect traditionally we have the best luck with a Monday or a Thursday. <laughs> what about the Thursday evening? Mm -hmm. So we probably so November 14th. This council, new council, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what you said. November 26th last November year. Okay. Um, this term of council is done November 15th. So Pardon me? November 15th. 
14th, really. The new council commences November 15th. Okay. And it's for the, the last year. So suggest, I'm going to suggest Thursday, November 3rd. That's what I was wondering if there, if for the previous year, if that was done. Okay. You have a motion for that? If you'd like in general business, you can. Yep. Um, the Scarecrow Roadshow is, is coming back. As we know, that's a huge success in Aspinall, Norwood. We are partnering with the library to do a Scarecrow building workshop. Um, it's been tentatively scheduled for September 23rd, so we'll be reaching out to the community, and I suspect we'll see lots of community members out, and the Roadshow will be Another huge success leading up to the Norwich Fair that we're happy to see back this year. And that's it for me, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll ask questions when you're through it all, anyway. So. <clears throat> all right, uh, on to uh, general business now. We had a delegation here earlier today. Mr. Crowley, Council, what would you like to discuss on that? Yeah. Um, I've got a couple of things, but we can start with that if, sure. you, if you'd like. Um, so, hold on, I've made notes here. So, um, I, under, I, I completely understand where he's coming from. Much of what he, um, what he described with picnics, barbecue, music, topless, dogs running loose, all of that, um, all of that is certainly covered under, under our, our bylaws. And, and it is unfortunate that that is happening now. I, I did take the time when I when I saw they were coming, and I spoke to to three different individuals, um, or I guess four really. Uh, two individuals who do use it; they're, they're local, and they do use it to swim. They said it's been extremely quiet. They've only ever met one other person down there. Um, another person who I believe he's a resident in the township, but he does put his boat in there. He also said it's been much different from the previous two years. It's been very quiet. And another person who lives um, down the wire road who is, you know, walks there daily and, and she has also said it's been quite quiet. Um, but, you know, being there and, and living beside it are, are two different things. Um, I do stick by the, the, um, the bylaw that is in place. And um, I was wondering if we couldn't, because it, it, it isn't a beach, it isn't a park. Um, is there not a way that we could put signage up with a QR code that states, hey, there are two beaches in Hastings. There's a park at Aspidel. There's the park at um, Aspidel Heights. There's a park with a splash pad here, that sort of thing. Um, instead of telling everyone what they can't do, it would be really nice to show them what else we have to offer. And, and I'm just wondering if that could be an option. And obviously we can still monitor it, but that was just a just a thought that uh, that I had. And I have certainly, you know, if I run into Hastings, I go that way. And even I took a drive down on Saturday because I thought, well, it's super hot Saturday. Hastings was busy. The boat launch was closed because of the waterfront festival. I thought this could be a mess at, at the fifth line. And I went and there were two cars and two trucks with boat trailers and not a person in sight. And that was 3, 3 30 in the afternoon on Saturday. So, so um, again, it's different from living next to it. I, I understand that, but I just wondered about um, doing that to advertise what we do have in the township because I can't imagine it's a fun place to hang out. Like it's just, it's weeds and it's stones. And if we could, you know, let people know that there's other things in the area. I think the people who do use it and use it well and the way it's intended are the locals. And it's unfortunate there's a, you know, a handful of people who don't live in the area who once again, always happens, ruin up their lives. And that's my opinion, but I'll throw it out there to everyone else. Yep. Go ahead, James. Um, I was thinking as he was speaking that the potential solution could be adding a time limit. So 
So any locals that go there for a swim or to let their dog cool off or to have a swim themselves, that you're not prohibiting the activity, but if you prohibit the time, the length of time they can enjoy that activity, you would maybe help encourage them to not day, day camp and picnic because it is occurring there. They are picnicking, they take up camp and they stay there for, you know, whether it's an hour, two or three. So I think regardless of what the activity is, if they're only doing it for 15 or 20 minutes, which I suspect or 30 minutes, what the locals are doing, oh, yeah. they're not hanging out there all day. They're going yeah. there and enjoying it for what it's worth and cooling off. Then if you put a time limit on those activities and people coming and we enforce that or try to enforce that with the OPP for the first couple of long weekends, yeah. then you may you know, discourage those out of town people for pumping. Mm -hmm. It's just a thought I had. Yeah, and, and I think I think that's a good idea too. Um, and, you know, do, it doesn't hurt to advertise where the places where they can. Yeah, and I have no problem with that either. Afternoon. Yeah, that's uh, fine. Councillor Moore. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, just to build on what Deputy Mayor um, Bert said and our CAO, um, I think the educational portion of that, of how and, and what and where is a good place to picnic or have a day trip is that is one a good solution and perhaps uh, staff can also monitor because they're the first line of defense when they see things happening uh, unless it's primarily on the weekends i'm not sure mm -hmm. of the uh, rotation of staff for, for weekend monitoring but um i agree with uh, the qr code that would be a brilliant solution of showing exactly People don't like to be told what not to do, but if they can find another place that's an excellent place to go for a picnic or a swim or a boat launch, perhaps mm -hmm. it would encourage them to go other places um, or, or use other facilities that are better suited for those activities. Um, I, I was uh, in agreement, like it's difficult to do um, the fishing, the swimming and the boating, like the, those three things, they don't always go hand to hand. And I think that we do really need to um, in the future, keep an eye on things um, because that that can't happen. I think that the this year it's it's slowing down. I think a couple more weeks, kids are back in school. There, you know, I think the summer is slowly, gradually uh, coming to an end for those things. But um, that's just comments from from, from me. That's our trick. Well, I was thinking that what Gloria had said. Um, I very nice idea that. Um, Putting the time on limit on over there and tip, and uh, but make sure we should educate them where they could go and spend more time and not cut people. But just further to the timing of it, it's just I just on the police side of things is how to be fair to the to the officers too in order to keep track of the time because I mean if somebody pulls in and then it's an argument well they've only been here ten minutes. And you're saying like i only have an hour or something like that mm -hmm. so like it's hard to judge and they're not going to be sitting there waiting for that hour because they're i mean let's face it there's not enough officers now to do the job as well as trying to keep track of the time of a specific boat launch. so that would be my only concern yeah but it may make them think think yeah. and you know if the if the officers are saying said it's being monitored or, or something and uh, yeah just a thought um and with the you know swimming, boating, and fishing, um, I know the, the local residents they manage it just fine. It, again, it's the ones that again it's the, the few that uh, ruin it for the many. But um, but yeah, I, I think those are two things that we could certainly try. I don't know if we have any other suggestions, but I think that's two two good options that we could. Uh, that we could oh, and one more thing, there is a sign there, four signs it says what. You can do one has or no what you cannot do. I think there's one that doesn't right. match the other there's three. There's one that doesn't match the other three. Yes. Yeah, I was aware yes. that was, I yeah. came aware okay. that this morning. Yeah. Okay. I'll just take it down. That, um, so that could cause some confusion too. Okay. Any other comments on that discussion? So is there a motion that's needed on this area at this moment? Yeah. Oh, yes. So, um, sure, there. I did write this down. Um, a motion for staff to develop a develop signage at the fifth line public access area for um, 
describing other options available within the township and surrounding communities for, for outdoor activities and to implement a 30 minute time limit on well, we, or well, permitted activities of permitted activities at the actual access of the water because you don't want any parking, you just want to have access to water. So, not for sure that to happen. Staff will help our chief at the end of I know the intent. Yeah, the intent's there. That's, that's all that matters. Um, do I have a seconder to that motion? That's the award. Any other discussion on that motion? All in favor? Carried, thank you. Uh, so, Deputy Mayor Burt, you had some others? Yeah, I just um, transportation master plan with the county. There's a PIC number two, and if you wanted to go on the county, um, website, it's available, you can go through it. Um, and if you have any comments um, online or by phone or in the comment box, you can add those and that has to be done by September 12th. It's quite a lengthy presentation, but I think it's um, well worth going through. And then tomorrow County Council, um, there is to be a tender award for Durban Bridge on the boundary line. And um, Currently, communication has been a little tough between the county and the lower tiers. So, um, Roger and I will be bringing that to the staff's attention. And and I think I think they've communicated with the the landowners or the property owners. But I think perhaps what they don't realize is it's a very high volume of traffic commuter line for people, especially in Norwood Park, to to go to Peterborough to uh, to Miss Highway Seven. So, uh, I think there just needs to be to staff so we'll be bringing that forward along with the uh, with the tender it's much higher than what was budgeted but it will be done over two years um, but as we know everything's coming in well over budget this uh, this term through this year so, and that i believe is all i have yes doing something with the fifth line but this is a lot of burden that was the first thing yeah <laughs> Uh, okay, Council Ward. Uh, yes, thank you for your mayor. I just had one uh, question for Candace. I was wondering if the road crew um, has identified any obnoxious weeds in the area, like for example, like the wild parsnips. Like I, I noticed that there have been um, some uh, work done in Northumberland County. I was going to the uh, plowing match, and I, I saw some uh, some of them along the side of the road that it looked like they had been sprayed. I was wondering if anyone had identified anything that mm -hmm. um, is of uh, know we should be looking for as residents um thank you through you mayor we um just got an email maybe about a month ago where they were spraying in norwood so peterborough county's program is up and about um let's just see here where our weed it? inspector has been out to each location to event, uh, verify the presence of the weed and our weed spraying contractor is going to be working throughout the county next week and we have had a couple of locations identified obnoxious weeds in Aspidal Norwood. And they were just north of Highway 7 on County Road 40 prior to the railroad tracks. Um, River Road, three locations on River Road. So it's complaint based. So there was three residents and I have the residents names here. They complained in the date that they reported it and they went out and investigated and they went out and they did um, completed the spraying. So it's important for um, residents or, or councils or staff if they notice anything that we report it to the weed inspectors that are appointed by the county to represent every lower tier. Okay, just a good reminder for yeah, residents. Thank definitely, you. you're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Uh, so then we need a motion then um, for the community awards night for November 3rd. That we're going to have it that, that evening. So. Okay. Motion, Deputy Mayor Burt, second by Council Archer. Any other discussion on that particular night? Um, is there a specific time? 6 30 or 7? Is it? Normal? Traditional 6 30. 6 30. Yeah. Whatever works. Okay. All right, motion's on the floor. Do we second it? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. And uh, we also need a motion then uh, for our next meeting of September 13th that we cancel that meeting. Motion by Councillor Archer, 
second by Deputy Mayor Burt. Any discussion on that? All in favor? And that's carried, and thank you. If there's anything else on the general business, is there that I'm aware of? No, thank you. No. Uh, there's no closed motion today. Uh, no notices of motion. And I'll ask the clerk to read the bylaws in place. So this bylaw is to um, follow suit with the uh, approved motion of council at our last meeting for the waste bylaw. So this updates um, all of those fees. Um, I also became aware since we are adopting the fees and charges bylaw that um, I became aware this morning that the library updated their fees and they have, uh, would council have two options. One, I can verbally read you out the changes that the library board approved that we need to incorporate into our fees and charges bylaw that I became aware of this morning. Or we can adopt the changes to the waste bylaw that was directed by council at our last meeting. And we can bring back the fees and charges bylaw to our next meeting with the updated library fees. It's up to you. Council um, Ward. Thank you for you. Uh, is the list very long? Because I think that we should read it now if it's not a very long list. Mm, there's about 16 items. I can be quick if you'd like, but. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So um, we will, I will read the bylaw that will incorporate being a bylaw to establish fees and charges to be collected by the corporation of the township of Aspinall Norwood, be read a first, second and third time and to include the following user fees and charges for the Aspinall Norwood Public Library as adopted by their library board. Printer and photocopier fees, 25 cents per page single-sided, 35 cents per page double-sided for black and white copies. Color copies, 50 cents per page, single-sided, 60 cents, double-sided. 11 by 17 black and white, 50 cents per page, single-sided, 60 cents per page, double-sided. And 11 by 17 color, a dollar per page, single-sided, and a dollar 10 per page, double-sided. For any copies um, to include a quantity of 21 or more, then an eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 14 black and white would be 15 cents per page, single-sided, 25 cents per page, double-sided. Eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 14 color, 14 cents per page single sided, 50 cents per page double sided, 11 by 17 black and white, 40 cents per page single sided, 50 cents per page double sided, 11 by 17 color, 90 cents per page single sided, a dollar per page double sided. Lamination to include eight and a half by 11 only, which would be $2 per page. They have a three day printer, so stock filament would be a dollar base fee plus 25 cents per 10 minute print time. Bring your own supplies for $5 per hour with a one hour minimum. They have a Cricut machine. The paper card stock would be 50 cents per page. The vinyl would be $1.50 per foot. Premium vinyl would be $3 per foot. And base fee means bring your own supplies at $5 per hour, one hour minimum. All other changes to the fees and charges bylaw were already present, presented to council at our last meeting. And I already stated that it'd be read a first, second, third time and numbered bylaw 2022-34. Thank you, Candace. Motion by Deputy Mayor Burt, second by Councilor Archer. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? It's carried, thank you. Next, please. Being a bylaw to appoint members to the Compliance Audit, Audit Committee for the 2022 municipal election, be read a first, second, and third time and numbered bylaw 2022-35. Motion by Councilor War, second by any other discussion? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Being a bylaw to amend bylaw 2015 73, being a bylaw to prohibit the establishment of transport pathways that increase the vulnerability of municipal drinking water sources, be read a first, second, and third time in numbered bylaw 2022 36. Motion by Councillor Archer, seconded by Councillor Ward. Any other discussion? All in favor? And that's carried. Being a bylaw to amend bylaw 2015-74, being a bylaw to require that property serviced by septic systems that are significant drinking water threats must connect to the municipal sewage collection system where feasible. Being read a first, second, and third time and numbered bylaw 2022-37. Motion by Councilor War, seconded by Deputy Mayor Burt. Any other discussion? All in favor? That's carried. Confirming bylaw, please. 
being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of the Council of the Township of Aspinall Norwood held on August 23rd, 2022, be read a first, second, and third time in numbered bylaw 2022 38. Motion by Councillor Archer, second by Deputy Mayor Mert. All in favor? That's carried. Okay, uh, on the agenda that we have the future meeting schedule. So, as you know, we've made the motion to uh, suspend the September 13th uh, Council meeting. Uh, Councillor Archer, you had something? Um, I just want to make uh, council aware that uh, we won't be here on the September 27th meeting. I'll be with the okay, so our next meeting would be September 27th in the Millennium Room at 1 p.m. So thank you for that information, Council Archer. Anyone else have anything on the meeting uh, schedule? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, then I need a motion then to adjourn the meeting at exactly 2 30 and that our next meeting will be September 27th, 2022 at 1 p.m. or at the call of the chair. Motion by Councillor Archer, seconded by Councillor War. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you, Council, and thank you, staff, for a good meeting. Enjoy the rest of your day.